In the past few months, we witnessed some of the craziest developments in open source LLMs. From July to December, there was a back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back state of the art open weights releases, all coming from different research labs. What's even crazier is that they were all achieved with different techniques and model sizes, with each model containing different strengths themselves. And every single one of these labs are pioneering with their own philosophy at the pinnacle of AI right now. What's also surprising is that out of these five, three of them are actually reaching the top for the very first time, which is insane. Insanely impressive. So in today's video, I'll be covering why I love to call the modern open source Chinese AI trifecta as they have defied the odds and challenged the closed source models at a pace no one thought was possible. And before I dive into it, with this AI trifecta being one more thing that'll create even more useful AI tools, it's getting weirdly easy to waste hours testing apps that don't actually move your work forward. And the real difference between casual users and power users usually isn't which tool is best, it's having a simple system of tools, workflows, and prompts that helps you turn AI tools into something practical and that you actually can reuse instead of constantly starting over. So if you want a faster way to level up in 2026, HubSpot has this limited time free bundle that's built for exactly that. It gives you instant access to their six most popular resources, including 50 plus curated productivity tools, 200 plus monetization strategies, events prompt engineering, and a bunch of copy paste workflows that could save you more than three hours per day. And what I like about it is that it's so useful. You get practical breakdowns for picking the right tools like the 40 plus free versus paid AI tools guide. So you can start lean, then upgrade only when it actually makes sense. So it's not just a pile of links, it's a bundle with guidance you can actually use. And it's designed to meet you where you are, whether you are a solo entrepreneur buried in admin, a marketing manager trying to do more with less, or a consultant who wants to add AI services without reinventing your whole process. So if you want to skip the trial and error phase and actually use AI more effectively, check out this bundle from HubSpot using the link down in the description. And thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, there's a recent trend in model development where the focus is no longer purely on reasoning or raw knowledge, but rather on practicality in certain key aspects. If you compare the current headlining benchmarks that are used in a big model release versus what was used about a year ago, the evaluation criteria are so much different. In the good old days, people always look at MMLU, GSM AK, Arc Challenge, Hella Swag, but nowadays it's all about Sui Bench, Life Code Bench, Tau2, Amy 2025, and GPQA Diamond. While naturally, as the key benchmarks from the past get saturated, the industry would shift towards harder and more advanced benchmarks, but this shift also introduces increasingly specific metrics that are narrower in scope than what we used to see. Like nowadays, it is much less common to see a model dominates across different benchmarks. A major contributor to this diversion is thanks to Agentic AI, which has created a landscape filled with narrow use cases where models can specialize. This current landscape then allows smaller AI labs to compete head-to-head -head with top-tier giants like Google and OpenAI. Another major shift has also emerged as the demand for practical usage becomes clearer, where pretty benchmarks are no longer a credible first impression. The real impression now is how good the model actually feels when using it. So this has created a gap between purely research-focused labs like DeepSeek and Quinn, who publish a lot of research and what the market actually needs right now. Which brings us to the first lab in the trifecta that is Moonshot AI. Their first ripple through the industry was Kimi K2, released in July 2025. In terms of pioneering open research, they are probably the most risk-taking company of the three I am talking about today. From Kimi K2 being the first large-scale model to replace Atom W Optimizer with Muon, which is the most basic building block of training a model, to making Kimi Linear, which is a hybrid attention model that outperforms state-of-the-art models on 1 million context window recall, this AI lab has shown a research spirit similar to DeepSeek, which makes your research papers so interesting to read. I actually have a deep dive video on Kimi K2 already that you can check out, and I'm also planning a video on Kimi Linear near hybrid attention, so stay tuned. But what's most impressive is their latest release, Kimi K2 Thinking, which was the state-of-the-art open source model on the artificial analysis leaderboard. Not only that, their open source release made considerations for inference efficiency. So usually, there's some difference between a model that is made in a lab to beat benchmarks versus one that is served to everyone. Because in reality, when you use a model from a service provider, the server that serves the model to you actually doesn't need to run at full precision. They can just serve it at a lower precision to improve speed and lower cost, all while losing only a tiny bit of performance. So generally, there's really not much reason to run at full precision unless you are training the model. However, it is often that benchmarks only reflect the performance of the full precision model. On top of that, if a provider fails to quantize the model properly for serving or sets up the prompt incorrectly, you might think the model sucks when in reality, it's the service provider's fault. This is why different providers often offer varying performance levels for the same model, which happens quite 
quite often for models like DeepSeek. However, Moonshot AI already took that into account. They applied quantization aware training during the post training of Kimi K2 thinking, which allows the model's MOE components to run at in for precision, doubling generation speed during inference. And since their state of the art performance on the benchmarks directly reflects their quantized model, they accurately represent a real user's experience. In the current economy of benchmark maxing, this is a move worthy of respect. Aside from that, what I also love about Moonshot AI is how open their researchers are when it comes to discussing research. And let me put you on this blog by one of their key researcher called Su Jianling. He started this blog in 2009 when he was 16 and has been posting till this day. Even though it's in Chinese, his latest posts explain some of the most technical topics in the field, including Muon, one of the key components behind Kimi K2. He not only covers the thought process behind it, but also the mathematical proofs and implementation guides, a complete knowledge goldmine of a website. Moonshot AI had a rapid rise as the company was only started back in March 2023, and now their valuation is already sitting at a whopping 2.5 billion US dollars while holding the best overall open source model topping DeepSeek and Quinn. They are without a doubt a key player in this AI frontier. The second lab in the trifecta that had a sudden rise this year is ZAI or short for Zipu AI. They are the oldest AI lab out of all the current top tier Chinese AI startups. Originally a research group within Tsinghua University, they spun out in 2019 to form Zipu AI. Their journey kind of started in the visual generation era, started back in 2021 with their first text to image model called CogView, and by mid 2025 they had formally rebranded to ZAI and acquired the domain, which definitely wasn't cheap. For comparison, J.AI is selling for at least 7 million, so Z.AI likely cost even more. While they had amazing releases like ChatGLM in June 2024, what surprised everyone was the release of GLM 4.5 in July 2025, which topped the open source leaderboard. In the latest version, GLM 4.7, beating DeepSeek V2 and Kimi K2 thinking, the actual open source state of the art right now. The design of this model is interesting. They still use group query attention, the same mechanism as the Llama 3 series, but their optimizer choice is like Moonshots, which is Muon. However, what's really impressive is that their model is three times smaller than Kimi K2 while performing better in certain aspects. Even their smaller model, GLM 4.5 Air, is competitive despite being a third of its size. And the training of the model is highly deliberate, focusing on agentic formatting and practicality, which are things standard general models often overlook. For instance, they address how character escaping in function call templates creates problems, as coding is frequently escaped. So when a model is predominantly used for coding, this becomes a learning burden. To solve this, they switch from the standard JSON format to an XML format so that the majority of the code can be represented in its native form without escaping. And this focus on practicality might be why their latest model, GLM 4.7, topped the Tau2 bench, which is an agentic tool use benchmark, as well as getting top spots in web design arena. As they want to position themselves as a model as a service, their current aim right now for the model is to be a cheaper alternative to clot code. With ZAI officially serving it at only $3 per month, it is a really compelling option as Anthropic's clock code is pretty much a luxury dev tool that ranges from 20 bucks all the way to 100 bucks. Another great thing about being open source is that companies like Cerebrus are able to implement GLM onto their own dedicated high speed inference chips, achieving insanely high throughput, like up to 1,500 tokens per second which pretty much feels like an instant generation. On top of their latest release, GLM 4.6 VL and GLM 4.6 VL Air, which has vision capabilities that can do things like refer to existing web pages or even Figma designs to convert it into actual code, can you believe that with all these, their valuation is only 5.6 billion US dollars? Yet they are contending with Anthropic that's worth 350 billion on their strongest moat right now, which is Claude Code. What a lovely competition. And as of recent, they just became the first ever public traded LLM company with a market cap of nearly 70 billion Hong Kong dollars, which is around 9 billion US dollars. And for the third lab out of the trifecta, we have Minimax. While they started their company all the way back in 2021 with focus on AI roleplay apps similar to character.ai, though didn't find much success in, they kind of just took off after a surprising release of a closed source video generator called Hilo AI, which became one of the best text to video models during the mid 2024 boom. Shortly after, they expanded 
expand it into text to speech, taking over the state of the art in March 2025 with Speech 02 HD. But until this point, these were all private models. That is until they started getting into LLMs in 2025, with them first releasing Minimax Text 01 and Minimax VL01 in January 2025, all under MIT license. And right off the bat, these two MOE models were massive, sitting at 456 billion parameters with 46 active parameters and hitting 1 million context window. On top of that, they decided to tackle long context window by proposing their own variant of linear attention called lining attention. Which by the way, this is their first proper LM release. And five months later, they released Minimax M1, which is a reasoning model based on their previous text 01. And it was clear that their goal was to pump out a top tier agentic model as soon as possible. However, there was a problem. Linear attention is notoriously bad at the exact thing they wanted to be good at, which is multi-hop reasoning. Multi-hop reasoning is basically the process of answering a query by combining information from multiple intermediate steps rather than relying on a single fact. For example, if you ask what profession does the wife of the 44th US president have, the model must 1. Identify the 44th president, 2. Identify his wife, and 3. Identify her profession. Since their goal was an agentic model, and it needs to rely on these type of reasoning, M1 was not off to a great start. So they pulled a Uno reverse pretty suddenly and released Minimax M2 in October 2025 using GQA, returning to standard attention. Well, there are more reasons to why they did an insane pivot, which I'll cover properly in my future video, but long story short, the M2 model was an accident. The standard attention model they were experimenting was so good that they had to release it. How good, you ask? Well, it is currently ranked number one on SWE Bench among all open source models, and number two on the instruction following benchmark among all all models and is two times cheaper than Kimi K2 on Context Bench while outperforming it. It also performed incredibly well on this private agentic benchmark made by AI Code King, though it does suffer from a bad case of hallucination. But with their ability to pivot so freely and top the leaderboards, Minimax is definitely a company with strong tempo and skill. And I think it's a bit surprising that the company has the lowest valuation out of all three, sitting at 4 billion US dollars, even though they have quite a state of the art lineup. And for a little bit of context, contrast, in February 2025, some Chinese economists estimated that DeepSeek has a valuation of around 2 to 30 billion US dollars. But anyways, looking at the current trend, there seems to be a new spectrum of development that companies can compete in, and this new Chinese trifecta is expanding aggressively into the application side of the spectrum rather than just the research side. From their clear goal of tackling agentic coding, terminal use, tool use, code reasoning, and context window, which are all application level capabilities, to using pre-existing and more conservative attention techniques like GQA, their activity doesn't look as much like DeepSeek, which spends time releasing research on niche topics like their DeepSeek sparse attention. So these labs are definitely moving in a straight line to make LMs practical, accessible, and affordable as soon as possible. Well, you could also argue that they aren't as strong at pure research compared to DeepSeek or even Quinn, but that might be a good thing, as this kind of creates a yin and yang balance in AI, where there are labs that are research oriented and there are labs that are application driven. With this dynamic, it will definitely help to accelerate AI progress for everyone as much of the knowledge is shared openly. So going into 2026, you should definitely keep an eye on this new Chinese trifecta because not only Chinese open source is already getting ahead on research, but the application side is now also challenging top US labs like Anthropic and OpenAI. Google is just Google though. For them, the more competition, the better they are. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Spam Madge, Chris Ledoux, Degan, Robert Zaviasa, Marcelo Ferreria, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, Alex, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.